Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let us start, and let us start with introducing ourselves. Uh, Elena Dimina is uh, one of the uh, people behind the organization of this conference. Uh, she is a part of also scientific committee, so many of you are here because of her invitation. And Agard Kiopa, Vice Rector of Science from Riga Studies University. We are here now and welcome all guests, experts, supporters here in the audience and also online because part of our participants are online participants. Well, then we can officially open uh, this meeting. And for uh, the opening words and for the starting of our opening session, let me ask our uh, rector uh, of Riga Stratton University, Professor Igers Pettersons, to give a welcoming word, a warm applause for our rector. Good morning participants of Networking Forum. Good morning, scientists, invited speakers, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure and honor to welcome you all today in Riga Stradinch University. I welcome about 350 participants from different 27 countries. Especially, I would like to welcome our colleagues, our friends, from Ukraine. Riga Stradinsh University supports Ukraine. We are with Ukraine now. Slava Ukraina, Slava Varoniem. Dear friends, precision medicine is not field of medicine of futures. In reality, it's a medicine of today's in good developed Western countries. And therefore, I hope this event will improve our result in different fields of medicine. Keywords of our forum is new opportunities in different processes of diagnostic and treatment of oncological diseases. I would like to wish you all a successful conference, creative discussions, good mood, and especially I would like to thank our local organizing committee. Especially I would like to thank Mr. John Tully for great ideas. Thank you, John, for your financial support. And I would like to thank also our colleagues and friends from different countries. Enjoy Riga Stradinsh University. Enjoy this event. Thank you. And now I have this honor to invite our mentor, as we talk, uh, say in our organizing committee, John Talley. Dear Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Precision Medicine Networking Forum on behalf of the Latvian Children's Oncology Fund and the American Chamber of Commerce in Latvia, of which both uh, I have the honor of chairing. I would like to offer a warm welcome to representatives from the more than 27 countries joining us today. AmCham and the Children's Oncology Fund are proud to be partner organizations of this important forum as we have healthcare as a key focus area. Why? We see opportunity for improvements in, health, in the healthcare system as precision medicine technologies are incorporated. The access and availability of quality data and the use of advanced technologies can lead to better disease prevention, personalized medicines and therapies, and more accurate diagnoses, and improvements in the quality of outcomes. 
On a personal note, my family suffered the loss of our daughter at almost six years old, and um, our children are our future, and we must put every effort into assuring a healthy childhood. I know that myself and all families that have suffered from cancer and rare diseases have the deepest respect for the precision medicine experts here and a genuine support for their efforts. Now let me turn it over to Roland Slapuche, advisor to the president of Latvia on digital health technology. And, uh, and he is a big supporter of today's forum. He has a special message from our Prime Minister, Christianis Kerinj. Thanks. Good morning, everybody in Labrit. Guten Morgen, buongiorno, tere tere, etc. Um, thank you, John, uh, for giving me the floor, but I would like to tell my personal uh, uh, gratitude for everything he's doing. You can't imagine how important it is in for the Children's Hospital, for example, and, uh, and Precision Medicine. So thank you very much from my heart. And I am not surprised then that the Prime Minister is also addressing his uh, letter first uh, to you, on Honorable uh, Mr. Tully, and uh, Distinguished uh, Precision Medicine Network Forum participants. This letter will be shortened a bit in my English. Uh, it is my true pleasure to welcome you all in this forum of precision medicine networking to exchange information and views and search for new cooperation in the field of precision medicine. Precision medicine, a promising area of medicine. It is about curing and it is about prophylaxis, helping at obtaining precise and quick diagnostics helping at defining accurate treatments. The Prime Minister's emph emphasis uh, is also on the need um, for uh, precision medicine, especially in oncology. Its meaning has been also introduced, included in several national strategic documents. I won't read the name of the documents, but believe me, they exist and it's written there. It is the Prime Minister's pride that Latvia has started to integrate genoma sequencing in our health system plans and uh, even to produce, the, there is one idea to produce even uh, genome sequencing devices. Latvia is strongly interested in the promotion of this field as one direction of our health care development. Precision medicine in Latvia against the co uh, from the cooperation of the state administration, from scientific circles and from the private sector. And this uh, forum is uh, an excellent example for that. So the prime minister is uh, wishing you uh, full success uh, when you are shaping up developing a better system, a uh, healthcare system in Latvia and in the whole world. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Roland. Uh, uh, it is my pleasure now to invite to the stage uh, our Minister of uh, Health, Daniel Spavliot. Please warm welcome. Good morning, dear rector, rectors, in fact, to John, uh, distinguished professors and, and guests, thank you everyone for coming over here for this forum. First of all, uh, I'd like to say thanks in a slightly different order. Dear rector, I, I salute everything that Riga Radinc University is doing to further excellence in, in higher education, in research, and, and among other things, organizing excellent uh, international forums for professionals to meet and, and further our knowledge and, and further our country's um, health care. Now, and this is a particular thanks because for the benefit of our guests here, 
uh, Riga Stradinch University is, in a sense, our university, the higher education establishment, the founder of which the shareholder, if you like, is the Ministry of Health. So that's uh, particularly important to us. Secondly, Dejan, thank you. Uh, I cannot uh, say enough about how important your contribution is uh, to our healthcare, to our country's development in, in general. And this is not just your uh, charitable contributions, but also your energy, your time that you volunteer, that you push us if necessary. So thank you for that as well. And, and your comrades like uh, Mr. Laputia. I'd also like to thank the team, Agrita, Elina, Waltz, and, and others that have helped uh, to put this um, conference uh, together. Now, a little bit on the topic. Well, you might know that uh, precision medicine is among one of the hot topics, not just around the world, but also in Latvia. And there are certain steps that we're making here in this country to enable uh, precision medicine to become actual reality, if not today, then certainly tomorrow, to a greater degree, and certainly in the future. Now, one of the top projects uh, that we have been working on uh, since uh, several years and, and months is uh, development of the new oncology register. And this is not just any register. This is actually a project to look deeply into treatment processes and pathways, to improve collaboration of specialists, streamline uh, procedures, integrate all levels into a seamless process, improve uh, patient experience, among other things, provide everyone with data that they need for high quality care, but also for uh, analysis, for study, for development of new personalized care, uh, for research and for innovation. So basically this is a project that, a flagship project, if you like, <coughs> apologies, that will lay the foundations for personalized medicine capability in this country for oncology patients. Now we do this with precision medicine and value-based medicine in mind. Now, this is a stepping stone, a large one, but by no means the only thing that we have in mind. In fact, we are now are at a crossroad. Some of the things we've done in the past with digitizing healthcare have not worked to our satisfaction, so this is the time and place that we change that. We have changed approach to how we develop uh, digital healthcare. In fact, we are now moving into a ecosystem approach, developing a digital health ecosystem in this country and oncology register will be a large stepping stone in that direction. So we deliberately developed this new system with innovation in mind in order to create environment for various actors to try and adapt new medical technologies, constantly learn and engage in ongoing research. So in a sense, we're trying to create a playground of innovation and in healthcare. And with resources, data, technologies and support to those uh, who want it. Last but not least, these plans are part of becoming a, an integral element of the European digital health data space, which is imminent, so I hope. An actual imminent transformation, digital transformation of, of EU healthcare systems. Now, there are things that we must do. There is homework that is still pending, things like uh, the passing of biobank regulation, passing of legislation on secondary data use. All of these are prepared, well advanced, and the remaining thing is for the incoming new parliament to complete the work by passing these laws. We have submitted budget requests, among other things, for a new applied research program in healthcare. And I hope that the next government that will put together uh, the new uh, budget for the next year will approve this. Now, let me say that smart digitization, regulatory evolution, substantial research capabilities, <clears throat> these things I've talked about, none of them will have impact unless we can evolve in governance and medical administrative practices. As we all know, 
culture eats a strategy for breakfast. While our technological capabilities and knowledge evolve, we need to keep in mind the, uh, the top priority, and this is making healthcare available to all. So the balancing act of investing on new, deep capabilities that precision medicine uh, provides us will still need to be balanced with delivery of healthcare to everyone. And this basically means two things. That we'll need to keep focus on energy, on increasing the budgetary resources available to healthcare. And we're not doing very well so far. We've invested massively, but this is something that we'll, we'll not be able to stop. Every country invests in healthcare. There will never be enough money for healthcare, but we must not stop. And the second thing is clearly the impetus that needs to be maintained with regard to reform mindedness, ability to uh, have a continuous improvement of governance processes in healthcare because there is never be going to be enough money to cover for inefficiencies in the system if they are there. With that note, I congratulate you and I thank you for your commitment to improving healthcare, to delivering the highest levels of excellence, I, and I wish you to have a fruitful exchange here and uh, a pleasant day meeting everybody face to face. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our forum is really multi-stakeholder forum. Uh, there are several sessions organized together with the Ministry of Economics, and therefore, I want to welcome on stage Roman Slapinj, Deputy State Secretary on Economic Development, Ministry of Economics. Honored guests, I am honored myself to be there. As a Ministry of Economics, our central concern for economic development is innovation. Uh, we are dedicating funds uh, for so there is opportunities for any company, any innovator uh, to do uh, what is best for our economy. We want to be perfect in everything, and it's impossible for such a small country. Uh, perfection uh, in everything is uh, not achievable. So, smart specialization is uh, central part of our innovation policy. Biomedicine and precision medicine is one of the uh, specialization areas for us. We are dedicating funds uh, for this. Approximately 12, millions, uh, 12 million additional euros will go to precision medicine development uh, in next years. We know that money is not enough. Leadership, knowledge, understanding, professionalism, all other time investments in uh, development quite often is much more important. So we will be sharing what we have already achieved in precision medicine there, but for us, much more importantly, we will be listening what's going on around the world so that we can develop better and better uh, strategies, better and better actions, and better and better international projects to actually compete in this field and win at the end. So thank you very much. We will be here today and tomorrow uh, on what is moving forward, where we can look and what we can develop together. Thank you. As a representative of Children's Clinical University Hospital, I must say that in our hospital, there is one very valuable thing that we always keep in our mind. We value patient experience very high. We can talk about science, we can talk about treatment possibilities, diagnostic possibilities, diag different kind of new methods we implement, but actually, most important is always to remember why we do that. And therefore, we, will invite, we invited here patients. Welcome. They will talk in Latvian, sorry for international participants, but we will try to summarize that at the end. But this is real patient story, family. Please welcome, Ralph. Labdien, man esat Ralfs, es stāstīšu par savu ārstašanās notikumu. Viss sākās 2018. gada vasaras beigās. Es pats piemu... Nē. 
It started in the year, in which year it started? It started in 2018. 2018, that's a quite fresh story. Yes. I woke up with... Uh, oh, no, that is not. I was okay. I was working on a circle in the and Man atlaika ir vēzis. I will translate a little bit, okay? What? I smell like patokos, yeah? Yeah. I woke up and I couldn't walk and I was very stressed and uh, I went to the hospital and nothing helped me. And then why I was sent to Children's Clinical University Hospital and they took a biopsy and they said that I have a cancer. Un pēc tam man aizsūtījās desmito nodaļu, kur man sāka ķīmijas. Un ķīmiju laikā man sāka mati kristārā, cik tas dūšas, un jā. Yeah. Yeah, and then he was sent to the ward 10 in our hospital's oncology department, and then the chemotherapy started for him, and that was a lot of suffering in his life. Un 2020. gadā man aizsūtīja uz Lietuvu, uz cilnešumu transplantāciju, kur man tā bija jāpalīdz visam tam, bet nekas nepalīdzēja. And then I was sent to Lithuania for transplantation, uh, cell transplantation, and, but unfortunately he expected that it will help, but he, it didn't enough. Un 2007, ne, 2019. gadā Manai mamai tikai klāts arī vēzis. And afterwards, there was diagnosis from my mom as well. Un pēc visas lietos, kad braucu uz Latviju, man bija ielais, sāka laistī dārgas zāles, brentoksin malu. And then I was treated with very expensive drug in Latvija. Un viņas palīdzēja man, jā. And it helped me. Un tagad es vēl aizvienā atstējos ar tajām zālēm, jo viņas ļoti labi palīdz. I continue this treatment and it helps me a lot. Un mana mamma arī ar tajām pašām zālēm aizstējās. And my mother is treated with the same drug as well. Paldies, kas tās tūt? That's your family story, as we, yeah. Let's well. Do you have some good memories from, <laughs> or only bad ones? Are you happy, sir? Are you happy? Okay. He has also good memories. Man es labās atmiņas no visas ārstāšanās ir, kad es satiku draugus, un arī tā kā varēju aizbrukt uz Lietuvu, bet uz Lietuvu tā kā nebija labākā lieta aizbraukt. The best thing was that I met some friends and I also went to Lithuania, even if it wasn't the best thing to do, but that was good memories for him. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that you are so brave to come and share your story. Okay. We have next uh, to uh, talk from Luvia Rafale, is online talk, and she's not yet here, or she is? Not. Oh. Okay, so then maybe, uh, or we, we are waiting or not? So basically what I encourage all of you, uh, this is forum for networking. There are a lot of different kind of experts here, international experts, national experts, different kind of people interested in precision medicine. And this forum, is erase different kind of barriers and to share knowledge, also to ask questions. You are welcome to, to ask questions, to meet our experts during the coffee breaks, uh, to discuss any interesting 
topics. And if you don't know how your experts look like, then just take brochure. You can see all faces. Just go around and you will find them. <laughs> okay, and it, I have a message that we have already. We are ready. Uh, well, thank you very much. And thank you uh, to our uh, family uh, who shared their experience. And uh, I think we probably need another round of warm uh, applause for them before we move to the... Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as our last but not least uh, speaker uh, in uh, this opening session, uh, we invite uh, uh, Ms. Fulvia Raffaelli from DG Sante. She is head of digital health unit and she will give us uh, uh, a short uh, intro in uh, the bigger frame in which we are putting our technical uh, efforts. Please, the floor is yours. Good morning. And uh, dear minister, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased and honored to address you today at this very important event. Data is an indispensable part of today's world. It can bring incredible benefits to every aspect of our everyday lives, including our health. Data is the most important keystone of facilitating a precision medicines approach to healthcare. Also, the pandemic has shown that uh, up-to-date health data is key in improving an efficient public health response to crisis and in developing effective treatment and vaccine. However, fragmented and divergent legal and administrative rules, frameworks, processes, standards and infrastructures in member states restrict today the access to health data for individuals, healthcare providers, research and innovators. The European Health Data Space is the European Union response to these challenges. What is the vision for the European Health Data Space? To put the proposal in the context, it is the first common EU data space in a specific sector proposed following the European data strategy. The European health data space is placing the interest of individuals in the center. It is a milestone for our digital transformation. The proposal has two main legs, primary and secondary use. On primary use of health data, it will further empower individuals to control their health data. They will be able to share their electronics health data with health professionals, have transparency over who accesses their data and be able to restrict information they do not want to share. To make this work, we introduce requirements for interoperability and security, as well as mandatory self-certification of electronic health record systems covering interoperability and security. On secondary use of health data, the European Health Data Space sets out a common EU framework on the use of health data for research, innovation, public health policy making, regulatory activities and personalized medicines. Researchers will have access to large troughs of health data. They will be able to know what data is available, where and of what quality. New vaccine or new generation therapeutics may well arrive quicker because it will be far easier to conduct research on a European scale with higher quality interoperable data. The European health data space would boost artificial intelligence research and development, as well as allow the individuals to reap the benefits of artificial intelligence in healthcare. Meanwhile, I want to underline trust is crucial to the success of the European health data space, and citizens must be confident that their health data will be protected. So I want to assure you that the European health data space we provide a trustworthy, secure setting for the access to and processing of health data. As I said, data protection is front and center of the European health data space, and we are building upon legislation such as the GDPR, with uh, 
the HDS, we are going even farther and provide more tailor-made rules for healthcare sector. The access to data by researchers, companies and institutions will require a permit from a health data access body to be set up in the all member states. Access will only be granted if the requested data is used for specific purposes in closed, secure environments and without revealing the identity of the individuals. It is also strictly and explicitly prohibited to use the data for decisions which are detrimental to citizens, such as designing harmful products or services or increasing an insurance premium. What, are, what outcomes do we expect when the HDS will have become re reality? The primary use part should lead to better health outcomes for people, as health professionals will have a better evidence base from which to plan treatment. It will also reduce the number of unnecessary tests and costs, and this will make healthcare system more efficient. We expect the financial benefit of primary use of health data to amount to 5.5 billion uh, euro over 10 years, including savings for healthcare providers and patients in health costs. On secondary use, we expect a significant economy benefit of at least 5.4 billion over the next 10 years. And these benefits will come from three key areas, efficiency gains in data access, greater information transparency for policymakers and regulators, and finally, better value for patients, healthcare providers, and innovators, thanks to further reuse of health data. This is an investment in our health, our societies, and our future. Member States have allocated around 12 billion under the Recovery and Resilience Facility for developing digital health, which can also be used for the HDS. 330 million are earmarked from the Euro for Health and Digital Euro program. And in addition, at least 480 million can be accessed by health authorities together with the other authorities under the Digital European program, Connecting Europe facilities and Horizon Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, we will only be able to make the most of health data if the necessary links are created to build a truly connected and trusted network of health system. To make the European health data space a reality, we need action at different levels. We need a collaboration with different sectors and stakeholders. We are counting on you, on your support, to make the European health data space a reality. Thank you very much, and I'm wishing you a very successful conference. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, to our last speaker. And